when the Social Security Administration makes a mistake in calculating how much Social Security or disability benefits you should receive, that mistake is your responsibility. And if the Social Security Administration has been paying you more money than you deserve, even for years, you could receive a letter that you owe all that money back. Yes, that's according to a bombshell CBS report that shows that millions of people are now on the hook for overpayment from the Social Security Administration. And the New York Times also followed up with a report that says that in 2024, a lot of beneficiaries are going to be impacted by this growing problem. I am going to give you all the details. And most importantly, if you receive one of these letters from Social Security Administration, the three options that you have to deal with this. This is not something you can ignore. So let us get right to it. So CBS 60 Minutes did a report following three people and sharing their stories about Social Security overpayment. Up to $72,000, one person received a letter that they owe money and their Social Security benefits was cut off. And then New York Times came up with a story just a few days ago about the Social Security Administration becoming a major debt collector that is trying to collect $26 billion that is owed to Social Security. So I am going to walk you through this overpayment and what you can do about it if you receive one of these letters. So let's start with the 60 Minutes report. So CNN's Anderson Cooper did a recent report on 60 Minutes, and the title alone is a big deal. It says, our responsibility, Social Security Administration, our mistake is your responsibility. That is really, really jarring to really look at because the Social Security Administration is saying that even if they make mistakes in calculating your benefits, it is your responsibility to have noticed that and reported it. And if they find out their own mistake, years later, you are still on the hook for, for the money. So let's get right into these stories that 60 Minutes featured. The first story is of Stephen and Becky Sword. And this couple lived in Chicago and... They received a letter from the Social Security Administration that they owe $51,887. How did this happen? Well, here's the background. The husband, Stephen, became ill and got on Social Security disability. And then after a while, he started working part-time. And you are allowed to work part-time when you can if you're on Social Security disability. There are two programs that you can get on. One is called Ticket to Work. But what happens is that when you're working while on disability benefits, you have to report your income to Social Security so that they will adjust your disability benefits based on how much money you're earning from the part-time job. Well, the SWORD said they've been doing that diligently and they have receipts and they have evidence to show that they've been sending those reports of income to the Social Security Administration diligently. That didn't change how much money he was receiving. And then years later, they got a letter in the mail that they owe $51,887 and they have 30 days to pay it. That is what the overpayment story is about. People are getting these letters unbeknownst to them for mistakes that the Social Security Administration make that they become responsible for. So they were on the hook for this and they had to pay it back. So there's an update to this story that I'm going to give you because I want to go to the next story which is of Jean and Glenn. And her story is even more bizarre because she started receiving Social Security retirement benefits six years ago. And when she started receiving the benefits, nothing looked, you know, an error. She didn't think anything of it. Well, she received Social Security for four years and then all of a sudden, Social Security cut off her benefits. Why? Because they realized that they had made a mistake in calculating her benefits and they sent her a bill for $72,000 and cut off her social security benefits. She hasn't received a single cent of social security benefits in two years because social security is using her benefits to pay for the overpayment that they said they have been paying her for four years. And the story continues. Even the story of Roy Farmer is even more bizarre because his overpayment happened while he was a child. So when he was young, he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and was able to get disability benefits. So his mom got disability benefits to take care of him. At age 11, Social Security stopped sending her, him disability benefits because they said he had gotten better. So they took him off disability benefits, which is something that they do. When you are disability benefits, they evaluate your condition periodically 
And if they think that you're no longer disabled, according to the social security definition, you will be taken off disability benefits. You will no longer receive the benefit. But in his case, they said that in addition to that, he owed money. He owed $4,900 because he, while he was 11, they had overpaid him more money than he should have received. So because he's an adult now and he's working and they think he can afford it, Social Security wanted their money back. So this is the CBS story, and all three of them appealed. They applied for a waiver. It was all denied. But when 60 Minutes ran this story, all of a sudden the Social Security Administration got a change of heart and forgave all their debt, even though they were hounded, they were, they were, they were chased for this money, and their benefits were cut off for a long time. Finally, after CBS made a lot of noise about this, Social Security forgave the money. But one million people are receiving letters each year because of this overpayment, and it's a growing problem. So before I get any further into the New York Times story, if you like what you're hearing so far, if you like the video, please hit the like button so that more people will see this video. And if you are new to this channel, I want to encourage you to subscribe. It really, really appreciate your support, and it helps our channel grow. So let's get to the New York Times story, which I think is an even bigger story. So after CBS ran their story, New York Times did an investigative reporting and came up with a story entitled, When Social Security Becomes a Debt Collector. Every year, the agency tries to claw back billions in overpayment benefits, including from children who are unaware their parents collected money on their behalf. As I talked about previously, Roy Farmer's situation was about that. He was a child when his mom collected disability benefits on his behalf, and they said he was overpaid, and when he became an adult, they wanted the money back. So the New York Times story is similar, and they profile three people, and I'm going to walk you through it because the first story is the strangest of all. So this is the story of Cree Flowers, and here is the background. When he was, she was recently married, she decided to log into a Social Security account and just take a look around, and then she discovered a shocking thing. There is a notice that she's been overpaid $17,121. Now, this is a young person. She hasn't collected Social Security benefits. So her initial reaction was that she thought it was fraudulent. Maybe somebody has gotten a hold of a Social Security ID, a Social Security number, and was collecting benefits under, under her name. So she called Social Security and then realized that Social Security was saying that she was overpaid when she was between the age of 10 and 18 years old. So she later found out that her sister was also overpaid by the same amount. So what is going on here? Well, she had numerous calls to the Social Security Administration trying to figure out how this happened. Why does she owe money? And she reached out to her representative in Congress who helped provide some 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 clarity on this and what happened is that she decided to record a TikTok video to share her experience because this was so strange that all of a sudden she owes 17,000 and her sister also owes the same amount of money and they don't really know what was what, what, where this came from and so here's what happened so basically social security was saying that between 1995 and 2003, she was expected to repay the bill. You know, that is when they say the money was paid to her when she was young. So they want the money back. So when she was 10 years old, apparently that was when they started overpaying her. So in, 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 in trying to dig through this story and understand what was happening, she couldn't get anybody on the phone that could explain really to her what was happening with this overpayment. And she found out that something may have happened with her dad's disability payment that may be associated with why she was being charged $17,000 of debt with the Social Security Administration. And when I dug into the story, here's what I found. In the 1990s, when her parents were separated and living in different states but still married, Miss Flores' father applied for and received Social Security disability benefits which can cover recipients' children. So her mother recalled receiving monthly payments of $100 or $120 for a year or so 
but nowhere near the $34,000 that both of them have been have been billed to owe the Social Security Administration. So her and her sister owe each owe $17,000. And according to the New York Times story, this was not her fault. And it may not even be her dad's fault. Yet they are on the hook for the money. So she recorded a TikTok video and that is how she made progress with this situation. So after Ms. Flores submitted her paperwork, the appeal paperwork, she saw a TikTok video posted by someone in a similar situation. The person had contacted the local representative of Congress about the issue. Ms. Flores, who lives in Georgia, reached out to Representative Lucy McBath, whose office contacted the Social Security Administration. Ms. Flores appeared at a hearing this summer and was told that the financial information she had submitted proved that she could not repay the amount. Her 17,121 overpayment was taken off her account. Her sister's case is pending. Ms. Flores made a TikTok, a viral TikTok video about her experience and said she had heard from hundreds of people with similar stories. So in her case, they still think she owed the money. So they, they, they waived it. After she appealed, he, she, they waived it because they said she could not afford to pay it back. So they are not even admitting the responsibility that it was their fault. They are just waiving it because she could not afford to pay it back. This is a very, very bizarre story. So the New York Times featured two more people. You know, this is a case of Sarah. She started receiving around 300 per month for her daughter from Social Security as her father, a former police officer, qualified for disability insurance. Then in 2020, she received a letter from the Social Security Administration about an overpayment due to the father receiving workers' compensation. So here's the picture. Mother is receiving Social Security $300 for the daughter because the, the, the former husband or father of the child, a former police officer qualified for disability benefits. So disability benefits for an adult, also then the child qualifies for disability. But then now she's receiving this letter that because the dad had qualified for workers' compensation simultaneously, he shouldn't have been receiving a certain amount of disability benefits. So now the daughter who was receiving disability benefits as a result of the father's disability is now on the hook. So the five-year-old daughter was deemed to owe $12,768. She appealed efforts to reconsider the charge were unsuccessful, so she appealed this, Social Security denied it, and now... Social Security continued to withhold her daughter's $120 monthly payment. So it's going to take until 2030 before her daughter's money will be paid back to the Social Security Administration. That is how long withholding her $120 is going to take for them to recoup all the money back. The letter she received stated that she had 30 days to repay the money or else her daughter's Social Security would stop. She asked for the charge to be reconsidered, but was unsuccessful. It wasn't enough to show that the overpayment was not her fault to win the appeal. She would also have to prove she could not repay the money. And according to this person, Kathleen Romig from the Social Security and Disability Policy at the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, almost no one successfully appeals or gets a waiver. It's very hard to appeal a Social Security overpayment or get a waiver completed because Social Security rarely grants these waivers unless you have a powerful voice like the CBS News advocating for you is very hard. Millions of people have been affected by this and are still on the hook and some of their benefits have been stopped or some of their benefits have been cut to be used to repay this money back. And then there's a third story from the New York Times story by Temi Aina. She learned about her an overpayment charge when she received a letter she didn't receive a tax rebate that she was expecting. The Social Security Administration had, an, had intercepted her tax rebate because they said she owed 11681 for benefits she received as a minor. Her brother was also charged with a similar overpayment. So you, you're seeing a certain pattern with the previous story. She fought the case by trying to prove that her father hadn't used the money for her benefit. She lost her last two tax refunds and potentially who face a wage garnishment. She reached out to Legal Aid for Assistance to help her in a two-year battle to fight this overpayment issue. And it caused her a lot of emotional stress 
because she was on the hook for this money and was potentially going to get her wages garnished. So she lived in Queens, New York. She learned she was being charged for an overpayment when she didn't receive an expected tax rebate. A few weeks later, a letter arrived from the Social Security Administration saying that she had received an overpayment on her father's account totaling 11681 during four years that, became in two, that begun in 2005, when she was 13. Her brother owed money too. She fought the case by providing evidence that showed that her father had not used the money on her behalf. The case dragged on for two years. She lost two tax refunds, totaling about $1,000, and at one point received a letter from the Social Security Administration that they would begin garnishing her wages. But she had to, you know... But she had switched jobs by the time the agency contacted her former employer, so the change was not immediately effective. So, this thing is happening, and you can't ignore it. And as I said, in 2024, one million people are going to receive letters from the Social Security Administration for overpayment. So I want to educate you on what to do if you get one of these letters. You have three options. The first one is to pay it back. If you think, if you believe they are correct, and you owe the money, then pay it back within 30 days. But a lot of people don't have the money sitting down to pay it back. And here's the wrinkle. If you're on disability benefits and you owe overpayment, it's a very bizarre letter to receive because if you're on disability, you can't have more than $2,000 in your bank account or you're going to lose your disability benefits. So if the Social Security Administration sends you a letter that you owe you know, $51,000, how do they expect you to pay $51,000 when they are telling you you can have more than $2,000 in your account or you're going to lose your benefits. So the first thing is to pay it back if you have the money. If you are like many people that don't have the money sitting down to pay it back, then you have two more options. The first one is to appeal. And you can appeal within 60 days or you can request a waiver. So let me walk you through the details of how to do this. So you can repay it back on the Social Security website within 30 days and then they will leave you alone. But if you don't have the money sitting around, then the next option is to file an appeal. Now, the letter you're going to receive is going to tell you to file that appeal within 60 days. But here's the thing. You have to do it within 30 days because after 30 days, the Social Security Administration can begin garnishment. They can begin, they can take your Social Security benefits and use it towards the repayment of your overpayment or they can cut your benefits. So if you want to stop all collection efforts before your appeal is reviewed, then you have to file your appeal within 30 days. You can do so right on the Social Security Administration website, as I've shown in the screen. In the screen. And here's the thing about an appeal. By law, Social Security Administration cannot do any collection efforts. They cannot initiate any collection against you until the appeal has been decided. So if you file your appeal within 30 days and they receive your appeal request within 30 days, they cannot do anything until they've made a decision on that. If you wait till 60 days, they can start collection on your account, including taking your entire benefits or taking part of it to be used towards paying your overpayment. The third thing you can do to fight this is to request a waiver. A waiver is essentially telling the Social Security Administration that you do not have the money to pay this back and that if they take your benefits or part of it, it's going to cost you severe, severe financial challenges. And you can file the appeal at a Social Security office, or you can fill out the form and file it online. But this is an option that is available to you to be able to act on this overpayment issue. Now, you should always appeal first. Why? Because the Social Security Administration makes mistakes. And so... You want to make sure that you understand why do they think that you owe money. And the way to get a good explanation is to visit the Social Security office and get an explanation or get them over the phone, but that may be hard to do. So go to an office and sit down with a representative and have them review your account and show you why is it that you owe this money and tell you specifically when they think you started owing the money and why. And then use that information if you disagree to file your appeal. And as I mentioned, you have to file the appeal within 30 days in order to stop any collection items. And if you mail it in, make sure that you track it to make sure that they have received it within the 30 days because then that stops any collection efforts right in its tracks 
until they've reviewed your appeal and made a decision on it. If you file the appeal and the Social Security Administration receives it, now you have to wait. And it may take about a few weeks for them to decide on your appeal, about four weeks minimum before they will make a decision. So you just have to wait. And there are three things that could happen with your appeal. They can say they agree with you, that you don't owe the money, and then it all go away. Or they will ask you for additional information, which you should supply to them quickly, or they may deny your appeal. And if your appeal is denied, then you have one final card you can play, which is to request a hearing before a Social Security Administrative judge. This is a legal proceeding, so you might want to find an attorney that deals with these legal proceedings and prepare the case for you and review your case to make sure that you can file a strong case to deal with this. If you believe that you don't owe this money, you should take it all the way if you can afford to do so. But a good way to do this is to hire an attorney that deals with these overpayments that can file a case and speaks the language of the court so that they can present a good case before the judge for you. So those are the three ways to deal with this. But why is this happening? Well, this has become a growing problem that even Congress is getting involved because a lot of people have been writing letters to Congress complaining about how the Social Security Administration have been treating them with these overpayments. But what, why is this even happening? Well, the fact is that the Social Security Administration lacks accountability when it comes to this overpayment. Why are they allowed to go all the way back to years and years and years and, and, and then start you know, leaning on people who are vulnerable, senior citizens, people who are on disability, and trying to get money from them? So why is there not a statute of limitation? And why is the appeal process no more flexible? Why is the payment plan process no more flexible? So, one of the reasons why this is dragging on is because the Social Security Administration is also understaffed. More people are, are receiving Social Security benefits than ever. And at the same time, Social Security staffing is at a 25-year low. So as you can see on this graph, from 60 minutes, you have over 71 million people getting Social Security benefits, but then staffing level keeps dropping at the Social Security Administration. So there aren't enough people to even help you if you have a problem with overpayment. And there are things that experts are recommending that Congress can do to ease the pain of overpayment. One of it is to put a statute of limitation on how far the Social Security Administration can go back to collect overpayments. And then the second is to reform the financial repayment plans to make it more flexible so that people can pay this money over time without severely impacting their Social Security benefits. Because remember, these are vulnerable people. Six, 40% of seniors who receive Social Security benefits, that is their only source of income. So when you take it away, you're putting people on the streets. You're putting people right into poverty because for a lot of people, that is their only source of income. And for a lot of disability people, it's the same thing. That is their only source of income. So when you take disability benefits from somebody because of overpayment, you are literally putting them on the street because where are they going to get money to feed themselves and to pay for rent? So, Social Security Administration has been busy. They've been collecting money, and one of the reasons they say is that because the Social Security Administration Trust Fund is going to be running out of money in 2035, they want to collect all the money that is owed to the government. But if you think about it, the $23 billion that is owed in overpayment is a drop in the bucket to the $27 trillion that is going to be the shortfall in the trust fund if Congress does not do something about Social Security benefits and reform the system so that more money can come in than is going out of the system. But as you can see, the Social Security Administration has been busy collecting overpayments the last five or six years. Last year, 2022, they collected $23.35 billion dollars and in 2024, they're about to send out another million letters to people trying to collect more money that is owed the government. So remember that 60-minute story that I told you about? Well, there was a happy ending for those people, as I mentioned. Their debt was forgiven after 60 minutes contacted the Social Security Administration on their behalf. But what about the million people that are out there who don't have people, powerful people advocating for them? What is going to happen to their situation 
what is going to happen to the debt that they owe are they going to continue to have their social security or disability benefits taken away or reduced severely because of something that may not have been their fault or they may not even be aware that they were getting more money than they should have received for years until they received that letter from the social security administration so that is this issue of overpayment if you get a letter do not ignore it if you are new to this channel I want to urge you to subscribe. It really, really helps our channel grow. And hit the like button if you enjoy this story. And it will help more people to see this story so that they can also know what to do if they receive one of these letters. You can also share it to whoever you think needs to see this. So until I see you in the next video, I want to hear from you in your comment section about this overpayment thing what you think about it, should the Social Security Administration be allowed to do this? So, until I see you in the next video, thank you for watching.